But on yesterday, uh, Jim Acosta, who's a CNN reporter, uh, was in the uh, pre the presidential coronavirus task force briefing on yesterday, and he's watching Tribulation Trump explain several things, and I, I'm going to get to that. But let me just dateline everything. Today is the first of April, uh, the year 2020, and the global uh, the, uh, the 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 total global cases of coronavirus right now listed globally is 874,000 people plus the total number of deaths so far, and this is so far, this is since January, is 43,000. But according to what we have heard Dr. Fauci say on yesterday and Dr. Burke that right in America there could be as many as 120 to 240,000 people dying. Uh, and there are reasons for that. Uh, mainly because of tribulation Trump, and I'm going to get into the false prophets that led tribulation Trump uh, into this deception that has brought about uh, so many deaths in America. We only got 43,000 deaths globally. We're going to see that escalate 10 times right here in America, according to the prognosticators. I don't know if I believe everything that they say. But right now we have 186,000 cases of coronavirus that have been listed through the testing process. And of course, that's just through testing. There are obviously uh, millions of people that have been affected by coronavirus. They just have not been tested. And a lot of people are asymptomatic, or that is to say that they don't realize that they have the coronavirus. And there are other people that have it, but have not been tested. And it has not necessarily affected them grievously. And then there are a total of 3,800 deaths um, uh, that, have, that have taken place, and I think I have to look at that again, uh, or 3,800 deaths, I think, and over 800 deaths on yesterday alone here in America. But Mr. NG, let's set the pace today by getting started with Jim Acosta stating that Tribulation Trump finally gets it, and that he believes that Tribulation Trump is, he has now been, it's been pointed out to him that this coronavirus is no hoax. Uh, and that he has grossly and grievously and viciously and violently misled the American people. And because he is grossly and violently and viciously and ignorantly misled the American people, literally hundreds of thousands of people are going to die because of him. And as a result, he has finally, it has finally been impressed upon him, stop running around and acting like a jackass and listen to Sean Hannity, and listen to them pot-bellied redneck men with the MAGA caps on talking about it's a hoax, and all the Tucker Carlson, Janine Pirro, and Laura Ingrams, and all of these people in the Senate, the Mitch McConnell, the Kevin McCarthy's, and it has finally dawned on Trump that this ain't no hoax, and that it is not a political ploy and that he has been using it to try to build up his presidential ambition. I, it is finally, Jim Acosta believes, I don't. Jim Acosta believes that Trump finally gets it. I don't, I don't. Jim Acosta believes that Trump is, is afraid. I don't because Trump is not here to, Trump came purposely to serve Satan and to bring deaths. But I'm going to explain to you what, and, I, and I, I'll give Acosta, I'll give Jim Acosta, and I understand why Jim Acosta said that yesterday. I understand that he said it because Trump's behavior is different. Trump knows that, that literally hundreds of thousands of Americans are going to die who didn't have to die. But this orange painted face, fool, this fool, because of him and his rhetoric, his lies, his deception, people by the hundreds of thousands are going to die who didn't have to. I think he knows that, but I don't think he cares. I don't think he gives a damn. But I'm going to let you listen to Jim Acosta. Mr. Engineer, roll that clip number one. Uh, Jim, uh, what stood out, uh, out to you? 
Anderson, I, I will tell you, in the seven years I have covered the White House, uh, that is the most stunning uh, briefing that I've ever sat through uh, to have public health officials come in and, and try to explain to the American people that they need to come to grips with the fact uh, or the very uh, strong likelihood that we're going to see 100 to 200,000 Americans die over the next couple of months from the coronavirus. Uh, I, I have to tell you, it, it was just downright chilling. Now, I, I will say in terms of what the president was saying in the briefing room, this was President Trump changing his tune on the coronavirus. At one point, he said it's not the flu, it's vicious. Uh, that's after he has compared it to the coronavirus in the past. Uh, you mentioned just a few moments ago where he was uh, advising that Americans uh, perhaps start wearing scarves uh, because of these recommendations that are starting to come from people like Dr. Fauci that perhaps wearing masks in public might be a good idea. Uh, you know, at one point, the president said that we're about to enter a rough two-week period. Uh, this is just a stark contrast from what the president was saying a couple of weeks ago and how he's been describing this coronavirus all along. And so we were trying to poke and prod uh, in a number of areas uh, during that briefing, Anderson. I asked the president, why is he talking about holding back 10,000 ventilators? Uh, and as he was describing it, it's because they want to be able to uh, get those off to places in need over the next couple of months. You do get the sense, Anderson, that they are getting into a warlike posture and trying to attack this virus. Uh, but at the same time, Anderson, I think the question had to be asked, how is it that the president uh, is going to determine who gets these ventilators? And he at one point said during the briefing, that's something that he's going to be deciding, and that his task force is going to be deciding. So I think, Anderson, we're about to enter a period where this government, the administration, is going to be making some very uncomfortable choices about the, how to care for Americans who are in very dire straits over the next couple of months. The other thing I think that needs to be pointed out, uh, at one point, the president, when I asked him, you know, could we have uh, mitigated this a lot better? Could we have reduced the number of people facing, uh, you know, the possible uh, likelihood that they may die over the next couple of months? And, you know, the president at one point said, well, you see what happens when you get off to a late start. He was pointing the finger at, at that point at New York State uh, and other areas that weren't really mitigating very strongly at first. But, Anderson, the same thing could be said of the president. He got off off to a late start because of the way he was telling people uh, that this was going to go away, that this was going to miraculously disappear and so on. I tried to press the president on that uh, at, at a number of points. And he said, you know, when he was pressed on this, he said he simply wanted to keep people in good spirits, uh, yeah. that he didn't want to be somebody who was passing along bad news and he wanted to be an optimist and so on. But I have to tell you, Anderson, I, I've never seen President Trump like this. I know people might say, well, I, you know, I can't I can't ever trust him. Uh, uh, he, he's, a, he's a phony and so on. People may say that. But, Anderson, I have to tell you, sitting in that room that close to him, I've never seen President you Trump know, like this. I, 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 I tend to, I mean, I hear what Jim Acosta is saying, and he, he's emphasized, this is the third time he said it, for emphasis that he's never seen Trump like this. And, he, and I watched that interview yesterday as well. I watched how Acosta normally... He, he, he's combative with Trump, and he, he forces his way through. But he, 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 he eased back on Trump because Trump did not have the, 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 the normal verboseness about himself on yesterday. Uh, so Costa, who has been gaming with Trump and sparring with him in, in these press events for the past four or five years, let him go yesterday. Um, but I, I just don't, I mean, I hear what Costa's saying. I, I, don't, I don't think that Trump gets it. But I, I mean, I don't think that Trump gives a damn. I think he's in, incapable. I think what happens, I think what Trump may be concerned about, I think what Trump may be, not about deaths. Trump don't care about 245,000 people dying. I'm telling you, he don't give a damn. He don't care. There could be two things. Elizabeth said, well, you know, maybe his son has got coronavirus. You know, his son had a birthday party yesterday and it was kept kind of muted. Um, or maybe, you know, maybe one of his children, maybe Ivanka has got the virus. Now that would get his attention. That would get that big orange painted face fool's attention. If Ivanka got coronavirus, that'd get that fool's attention. 
And if, if she's had it for some time and she's at the point now where she may need a, a ventilator, that would get that fool's attention because he don't give a damn about nobody else. I'm telling you, Jim Acosta, you can say what you want. Trump don't care nothing about nobody else. But if it, if one of, if, and, and, and Eric, he wouldn't care for Eric. He don't care hell, the hell with Eric. He might give a little something about Donald Jr. You don't care nothing about that. He don't care nothing about that tall boy, that tall one, that boy taller than a doggone giraffe, that tall boy that he had with that woman, Ivanka. Not Ivanka, Melania, rather. Uh, but it, now if, if Ivanka's got it, he may be a little concerned. Uh, but I don't think, it, it, you know, I, 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 you know I, I just don't. Anyway, Mr. Engineer, go ahead and roll uh, the rest of that clip of Jim Acosta. Go ahead and roll the rest of it. I think to some extent he is he is scared right now, Anderson. And I and I we think can the all other feel thing is too he might be he he might realize that there ain't no way he's going to be elected president if a quarter of a million people die between now and November. He's out, and and isn't just that he will not be elected president, but the fact that he's going to go to jail. Rudy Giuliani right now they've got they've got at least twenty five indictments in the Brooklyn. Uh, uh, what's that, Brooklyn court, federal court over there in Brooklyn waiting for Trump to leave office so they can indict Giuliani. And they got as many for Trump as well. And it isn't that he going to, you know, become, no, he get, get, get uh, elected out of president, he doesn't get elected, reelected rather, and he rides off into the sunset. No, that boy going to ride off into the jail. What he going to probably do is commit suicide. Uh, but that's what I don't. I don't really think Trump don't care nothing about nobody. Have a quarter of a million people dying ain't nothing to him, and ain't never been nothing to him, and it never will be. But that could do two things. One, Ivanka could have it, or one of his boys could have it, or then the other is that he knows that if if it, listen, if ten thousand people die here in America, he's toast. Anyway, Mr. Engineer, roll the rest of that. Well, Jim, let me ask you, what, what was very startling to me is, uh, you know, you have Governor Cuomo uh, this morning sort of expressing just, I don't know how to characterize it, uh, frustration, disgust, you know, uh, st whatever it is that, you know, right. states are now being told, oh, you, you got to just find your own ventilators. So states are now bidding against each other. And then he says, then FEMA comes in uh, and bids against the states. And it's just a totally messed up system. It's driving the prices up. The president was asked about that. He, uh, well, he went around and around on it, but he ultimately came down to saying, well, they shouldn't be doing that because you're just going to be bidding up the prices, which is exactly what Governor Cuomo said is happening. And the president said, well, the state shouldn't do that. They should call the White House and the White House would get the ventilators and then send it to the states. That is in stark. That's exactly the opposite of what President Trump said a while ago, which was, you know, it's not the federal's, federal government's job to, you know, to be sending out and supplying the states. The states are the ones who should go out, get ventilators and do stuff. Um, and then the federal government is a backup. That's right, Anderson. And I, and I don't think the president wanted to, I think, come to that reality that we have a situation right now in this country where governors are competing with one another for vital, life-saving medical equipment. And quite frankly, when the president says, well, we're going to keep 10,000 ventilators in a stockpile and, and send them off when they're needed in certain hotspots, uh, it may be too little too late. Uh, some of these hotspots may need many more than that. Mm. And so I tried to ask the question, you know, is that that part of the modeling is that part of the reason why they're saying 100,000 to 200,000 deaths uh, because we just don't have the equipment. We weren't ready. We weren't prepared as a nation. And you know, Dr. Burks came up to the lectern at one point. Dr. Fauci. I think Dr. Fauci came the closest to anybody in that room to acknowledging that had we been uh, more aggressive sooner, that perhaps we might have been able to lower this projection that was just grabbing us by the shirt collar in that room. Dr. Burks was essentially saying, well, uh, this virus even surprised her. I think there are just going to be so many lessons learned moving forward, Anderson, but the, the stark message that we got in that briefing room this evening is unmistakable. This country is about to go through a horrendous, terrible experience. And, yeah. I, and I have to tell you, people may not believe the president when he says any of this. And I've been, you and I have been, uh, you know, uh, pretty critical of him from time to time. Yeah. This was a different Donald Trump tonight. I think he gets it. I think that's significant for us to hear that. And I think, Acosta, I respect you. I mean, I, and I, respect, I respect your ethics or your politics, or, but, but I respect the fact that you said that. 
that this was a different tribulation Trump. Uh, and that then the other thing you just said before closing out that piece was that America's getting ready to go through something that she ain't never experienced before. I have been stating to some of you that will listen according to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, 21, where Trump always says, I'm the only one that's ever done this. I'm the best president is. I'm the smartest genius. I'm, I'm the smartest. I know everything. I'm smarter than everybody. I know everything. I know more about South uh, Korea than South Korea. I'm the smartest genius. I know more than the generals. I'm the, I'm, I'm the smartest one. I'm the best one. I, I, when I inherited the presidency, I inherited a mess, and, and not just Obama, but every, I mean, I'm the, even the Republican. I had to clean this thing up. I, I had to clean this thing up. All the presidents, none of them has done as good as me. I'm the, I, I presided over the greatest economy. I'm, I'm the smartest one. I'm the stable genius. I know more than the generals. I mean, I'm the smartest. I don't need nobody. I'm the smartest one. I know more than the generals. I'm smarter than the Pentagon. I'm the, I, nobody. I had to clean this thing up. No president, no, no president, no, no president, no president has been able to do what I do. No, no president. And the man is a psycho. The man's a psychopath. He belongs in the damn cuckoo's nest. He belongs in the cuckoo's nest. Man's crazy. So I respect, I respect what Jim Acosta is saying with respect that you've never seen president. He's a bit subdued on yesterday. Uh, but here, America is getting ready to go through something. And the reason why Matthew's Gospel 24, 21 is important, we've never seen anything like this. And that's why Trump says it all the time. We have never seen, because he is the fulfillment of prophecy. Now, you may think what you want to think about me. You can accuse me. You can say you can be racist. You can be hatred. You can be whatever you want. But I'm telling you the truth. God called him the trigger of the tribulation. And every time he opens his mouth, he follows pursuit of prophecy that we've never seen anything like this. And according to what Jim Acosta just said, and according to what Dr. Burke and Dr. Vosche is saying, is that America's getting ready to go through something like we ain't never seen before, even with the Spanish flu, and even with the Great Depression, and even with World War I. We ain't never seen what's getting ready to happen in America. And nobody's sounding the alarm, biblically or spiritually, and as to what's taking place. So I, I appreciate what Acosta has said, and uh, we'll see how it, 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 it all shapes out. This is a bit of a news blog we do, looking at spiritual wickedness in high places for the most part making uh, some observations about it and giving people a biblical foundation to the way of interpreting rather than have uh, uh, Sean Hannity or Laura Ingram or Janine Pirro or Anderson Cooper or Rachel Maydow or Don Lemon, uh, Rush Limbaugh interpret what's going on in the world. You come to me and I'll tell you based on what the word of God says. They'll just give you their worldly sinful view. But the man in repentance will tell you what God has said, whether to say yea or nay, whether to go or to stay. You'll be led by the word of Almighty God. Come to the Manning Report on a daily basis to interpret the spiritual wickedness in high places because there's plenty of it that's going on. And so I am he, I'm the Lord, sir, James David Righteous Rebel Manning. And I'm here to serve you with news and information.